Now guys, I've got an awesome surprise that I want to show you. Mm -hmm. Something brand new as usual. <laughs> Mabuhay Squad, check out what I just got. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. Amano shrimp. See that? I've got about 20 amano shrimp now. Now, at first, I never got them because I felt like the fish would eat them, but they're actually pretty fast. And because of the thick, like, vegetation here, the amano shrimp are able to hide from the bigger fish, mostly from the angels. Those are the ones that are probably the most predatory for the shrimp, but also the amano shrimp are quite large. They're big, and they get really big, like almost two inches. That one is kind of a small one right there. But I'm happy that I finally have amano shrimp because they are awesome at eating all the junk and also eating algae. Amano shrimp basically are one of the best algae eaters of the aquarium hobby and they're named after Takashi Amano who they call basically the godfather of aquascaping from Japan. And Takashi Amano used to use so many amano shrimp to keep his tanks clean of algae and so I'm happy to actually introduce them to the meadow of the dwarves. And for me these shrimp still fit into the theme of Meadow of the Dwarves. For me, they're like crystal fairies <laughs> that kind of hang out in the vegetation. And yeah, they're like a community of fairies. They're so graceful. Whoa. And they're gone before you know it. Of course, we have the Galaxy Rasbora fish, right? Those really tiny, tiny fish back there. Those are the sprites of the land. And my new shrimp are the fairies. Yes. All right. They're so beautiful. Yes, go clean those plants of algae. Go clean. It's awesome because every algae eater in this tank can get to certain parts that the others can't. For instance, my Siamese algae eaters, see here, they go around and they're effective at cleaning algae from the plant leaves and they're great because they travel in a school and they're pretty thorough. The albino bristlenose pleco is great at cleaning the wood and the rocks. Very, very good at scraping algae from like hard surfaces like that. My autosynclus catfish, which you can see back there, I have a school of about seven of them and they're amazing at eating the algae that is still not visible to the naked eye. They're good at seeking out algae that's just starting to grow, like that's still just a thin slime and I love them. They are also pretty thorough. My horned nerite snails, which I can't find right now, but there's one of the, I call it the unicorns of the land. There is a baby elephant snail. These snails get into the nooks and crannies that the other algae eaters can't get into, like spaces in the rocks and stuff. And then the amano shrimp are good at getting at the uppermost part of the leaves in between branches that the other fish can't get to, the other algae eaters. And uh, I guess they, they fit right in. It's really hard to find them. They're really good at hiding, which is a good thing because there are fish in here who would pick them off if they could catch them. Such a beautiful tank. And of course we have Michelangelo here trying to steal the scene. <laughs> Good morning. Where are ya? There you are. Good morning. Yes. Morning, you guys. Did you sleep well? Good morning, guys. I want to show you guys this. Check this out. This is my wheatgrass. Yes, I'm growing wheatgrass um, for Ligaya. So I'm going to take some for her chop. Yes. Love growing our own food. All right, Ligaya flew to my shoulder. Guys, I can't wait to try this. It's the new hand chopper. So I'm going to stick in a carrot. Do I have to like chop it up? No, it should be doing it for me. Guys, check this out. Wow! Awesome! It really works. Okay, and now I'm gonna stick in a turnip. Wow! Awesome! Okay, and then let's stick in some zucchini. Wow! So cool! Wow, it actually works guys. Okay, I'm gonna be here for a few minutes to blend my various ingredients. Wow, and I guess this, oh wow, the blade just comes right off. What an invention. People are so smart. I'm gonna keep this chop in here. It should last several days. I still have a few other ingredients to add to it, but oh, so good to finally have this chopper. It's perfect. The guy is making your breakfast will be so easy and fast. But
but I do think that to be really effective, I need to do it in like batches because all the ingredients won't can't possibly fit here and then just mix it all in the end. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so I've got the blend here. Just put a little bit of that in there for the next day or so. Then next, I add my quinoa and brown rice, which Legaya loves. Loves this stuff, yes. Then I add lentils and cooked mung beans. A little bit of that, like so. Oh, she's gonna love this, I hope. <laughs> and then of course, we have a little bit of red palm oil. Yes, antioxidants and beta carotenes, vitamin A and E. So good. A dash of coconut oil. There we go. Mix it all up. Mmm. Look at that chop. Mmm, it smells good too. So good. Look at her going in her cage. She knows. She's like, all right, it's feeding time. <laughs> a couple goji berries and we're good to go. All right, Legaya. Hope you enjoy this feast that I made with love. There you go. Enjoy my bird. Feast. Feast. Yes. Yes. Go, go, go. Eat. Mmm. So satisfying. Wow guys, she is loving that chop right now. <laughs> awesome! A lot of good stuff in there. Um, in case you guys are wondering, um, I'm following more or less the Bird Tricks seasonal diet. Feel free to pick up their book. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, they've got three books actually. It's got a lot of great recipes, but their premise to feeding their parrots is seasonal. Um, like in the wild, parrots diets change depending on the season. So um, they kind of load up when like certain foods are abundant and then they go through the rest of the year without that particular food. So it's a nice round diet of course we're in the summer right now that mash has a bunch of really great things different various beans lentils various vegetables grains like millet and <laughs> spelt I don't have spelt in there yet it's coming in the mail what they recommend is you uh, create like a whole batch of it to last you four months um, and you just stick it in the freezer and defrost as needed. But I want the guy's stuff to be fresh, so I'm choosing to do it per day, and this really helps. The uh, only problem with doing it per day is that, well, for one thing, it does take some time. And also, certain ingredients aren't always available here in the Philippines, like, I don't know, collard greens, you know what I mean? So sometimes they're available, sometimes they're not. Um, I just add them as the ingredients become available. It's also got like pastas and stuff in there, really great, you should check them out. Um, and in case you guys are wondering about this blender, the brand is called Kiowa. And so far it's working pretty well. Very easy and I don't know, for all you parents out there that need to like make, I don't chop up, I don't know, onions or, or cook requiring chopping of vegetables or something or ingredients. This is like super fast. Preparing Ligaya's breakfast took maybe, I don't know, not even five minutes. And once I'm in routine, I bet I could prepare her breakfast in like two minutes. Um, as opposed to like the 20 minutes that it used to take chopping everything up by hand. Yes. More time for myself in the morning, my coffee and my red palm oil. Yes. <laughs> you know how they call butter in your coffee bullet coffee, which by the way I've been doing forever before it even had a name. I figure this is like nuclear bomb coffee <laughs> So much energy. I swear like all you Kato people mm. Wow, look I breathe breathe <laughs> She's going to town and your beak still dirty <laughs> I love looking at the colors of like fresh ingredients, right? Like look at look at the purple of the beets and then you have the like bright orange yellow of the palm oil, the crimson red and green tops of the chili peppers and then the beautiful green and like cream of the zucchini. I don't know, I'm just weird. I love food, I love colors. All these leftover garbage parts of the guy's breakfast, along with anything she doesn't finish today, goes to feed my roaches, <laughs> which go on to feed my ants. So nothing gets wasted. Now the thing with her chop is I can't really see what it is she loves the most. Yesterday she picked out from her chop like all the brown rice and quinoa. And like it's hard to see what she's eating, but 
because it's also blended, I'm pretty sure she's at least having and ingesting a little bit of everything. Everything else she just casts off everywhere. It's all at the bottom of the cage. It's like on the sides of these bars, it's everywhere. We have to really wipe down and clean everything here every day after feeding. What is it you like? Do you like the lentils? <laughs> so messy. You are such a messy eater, just like me. Yes. You know, in keeping the Gaia, I've really learned a lot. Well, for one thing, I've realized that birds are not like dogs and cats. You know what I mean? Like, we've had decades and maybe even we've had centuries of, you know, time to master the husbandry. How to care for a dog and a cat. Straightforward, very easy. Humans are now masters at keeping both dogs and cats, right? But I find with birds, they're in the exotic category still. Like, they're still wild animals that we are in the process of domesticating. They're not in the same category as dog and cat, like I thought. Now I'm talking about large parrots. Yeah, humans have been keeping large parrots, I believe, for centuries too, but I mean, they're still very wild. And there's still a lot humans don't know about their care, about their health. You know, before getting a pet, I always try to do as much research as I can. But in getting Ligaya, what I've learned is there's only so much you can research. <laughs> I thought I had, like, researched pretty much 95% of what there is to know about keeping a parrot. But after two years of keeping her, almost two years, I've realized that, I don't know, I guess it's kind of like parenting. You can only research so much, but after that, you really need to navigate your way through like learning how to take care of a parrot. It's a lot of like experimentation and just improvisation, learning to improve and get better at your parenting, <laughs> at keeping the parrot, you know, there's just so much to learn like in the experience. There's no like you kind of have to be your own coach I suppose. You learn as you go along. I um, mean that's what I've learned about keeping these parrots is yeah you can follow the book and all the information out there but like who would have ever thought about PDD? I never thought about PDD and now Ligaya might have it. So yeah I guess like being a parent to human kids it's like you just kind of have to find your way and learn to get better. So if you guys are out there thinking of getting a bird or a parrot be prepared to take in what is still very much so a wild animal that humans haven't mastered the care of yet and you have to become the master of the care of your bird that's i guess my only advice and the thing i wish i knew before getting ligaya in other words it will be a long and never ending learning curve <laughs> having a bird is hard work right but it's loving work for the right people right guys rj and i love taking care of you it's somehow fulfilling even if it is hard work and oh OMG, we're about to take another child soon. Cypher. Life's gonna change after that, guys. OMG, I already know. I'm well aware how much life changes once you bring a dog into the picture. The funny thing about it is RJ has no idea. Like, he's never lived or grown up with a dog. He says he has, but no, those are like street dogs that would come to his house, possibly even walk into his house. But no, that's a different thing. You guys know, like, having a puppy, it just changes the entire dynamic of a household and and like your life, you know what I mean? It's really like a new child. So OMG, Cypher is gonna be really something. We don't know when Cypher is gonna get here. He might even get here in like months from now. <laughs> It really depends on when Ed, Mark, and Nika can go out to Baguio and get the dog. Um, which is good because it gives RJ and I some time to prepare. To further research, I myself need to like refresh in terms of like what's the latest in training and nutrition for dogs, you know. I raised pretty much all my dogs growing up in Toronto, Canada. Um, and they all lived like fruitful lives. They never bit anybody, you know, like they were very tame, um, very well behaved. So um, I'm looking forward to watching Cypher come into his own, you know what I mean? And become part of our flock slash pack. And Cypher will also be the first dog of the pack of dogs that we hopefully will be getting in the future for when we move to the future farm. Yes! Oh my gosh, so excited about that! Um, for those of you who don't know, RJ and I are currently 
building our future home. It's a company home. It's a farm. We're gonna be working from the farm house. There's an ant room and an animal room there. Uh, we'll have a studio as well on the first floor so we could do our various like YouTube and social media stuff there. Ate Elsie, our uh, helper, uh, will be living with us. She will have her own place along with uh, the various staff we will have helping us out on this uh, farm property. So I'm really excited about that and for sure we're gonna have a pack of dogs Mabuhai squad because you know we need protection and it just it, it would help to have some dogs helping with the work you know what I mean like I I don't know if this is ever gonna happen but like I envision some kind of working dog gathering I don't know goats or like chickens or geese into like a pen I don't know anyways I'm so excited about that upcoming adventure I'm happy to learn about farming and you know farm animal husbandry that's gonna be awesome OMG can you imagine delivering I don't know a mother goat I want to like have my hands deep in like placenta like delivering a calf of a cow you know what I mean and like crying the blood all over that's like I don't know so fulfilling I'm so interested collecting eggs in the morning Ooh. Can't wait. All right, guys, so positive affirmation for Tuesday, June the 16th. I close my eyes, think positive thoughts, and breathe goodness in and out. Ooh, love that. Let's do that now, guys. Close your eyes. Hold on to one positive thought, a thought that makes you feel really good, whether it be, I don't know, a past memory, I don't know, your youth or years ago, or a moment that you cherish, or just something you look forward to in the future, or any moment when you feel truly happy and positive breathe all of that goodness in and breathe it out all right you have been cleansed yes hope you enjoyed today's positive affirmation guys oh I swear I don't know if it's that palm oil in here all the antioxidants of the palm oil but I feel great this morning Ooh, chipper sunshine love Now, my boy squad, um, of course I read your comments, right? I really appreciate all the feedback. Um, but there seems to be a, I guess a reoccurring comment that I feel like I needed to address. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I want to keep it positive. But I need to say this. My boy squad, it's this.